Today we're talking about the left PSA because that one students can find challenging. So before we go diving into the injection, I want to review positioning because even with the right PSA, positioning is huge, but it's even more important with the left PSA. And what I notice, students tend to want to sit up here, closer to the top of the head, maybe 11 or 12 o'clock. And for the left PSA, look at what that's going to do to my wrist. You want to make sure you're sitting in kind of a straddle position and you're not twisting like this because you get more stability. You want your feet on the floor with your leg muscles engaged so that you can lean and uh, do whatever you need to do. You want the patient low enough and the face nice and flat. With the right PSA, I said, don't let the patient turn their head because you need um, their head straight so that you can see your angles. But with the left PSA, you can have them turn a little bit because it's too hard to reach all the way over there. So one of the most important concepts for the left PSA is how you're holding the syringe. So with the right PSA, you are just holding it, you know, pretty much normally. But with the left PSA, you want to make sure that your palm is up like this. And what's, what naturally wants to happen is you want your thumb up because you're trying to reach into this little tiny space and it feels like you have more control like this. So students go in like this, their thumb is up and look what happens to their wrist when they try to bring that angle out. So it's extremely important that you keep your palm up. Sometimes I can't keep my palm up as I'm going in, so I'll put my thumb up for a minute and then I'll turn and then I will push out. So look at how I'm pushing out. I've actually got my ring finger kind of against the barrel too. My middle finger is way up, so I've let this slide so I can stabilize. So now I'm nice and stable. I can go in and then before you get your angle, turn your palm up and push out like that and my wrist is much straighter and I can get that angle so make sure you're not like this it's almost like putting a oven rack in the oven is the pressure that you're putting to get the angle you're not using your wrist you're kind of using your whole arm like you were putting an oven rack in so like if you need your thumb up for a minute to go in and then you twist to get your palm up and then push out like that and that will get you a good angle before I do the injection, I want to talk about one more thing and that's retraction. There's basically two ways to retract for the left PSA, but the concept is the same. Like the right side, you want to find the spot with your finger, palpate it. That's the soft spot behind the strut. That's my site. Now I'm going to stretch out with my finger and find the bone next door and just plant my finger on it so that the site stays nice and tight, so I'm not grabbing with my thumb and my finger. I'm using my finger or my thumb to find that soft spot and get that nice and tight. So when I said there's two ways to retract, you can either do that with your pointer finger or your thumb. And I like to use my pointer finger, but a lot of instructors like to use their thumb. The reason they like to use their thumb is when you see, okay, I'm palpating. Look at my wrist. It's nice and straight. So it's, it's nice and ergonomic. But when I use my pointer finger, I have more room to, because it's not a big area with that sight. So when I use my finger, I can pull it out and then gravity helps me plant it straight down towards the flo floor and I can stay on that bone easier. And I feel like I can get underneath my finger easier to get into the sight than I can if I'm using my thumb you see how my thumb is bigger and it kind of gets in the way there? But that's me, that's how I learned and I prefer it that way and I really don't care as long as you're able to get in there and get the angle. Yeah. All right, let's do this. I'm gonna go ahead and give her the left PSA. So I'm palpating the strut. There's the soft spot, I've fallen behind it. So notice how I've twisted my left, my non-dominant hand, my left hand around so that the pad of my finger is pointed towards the patient's ear or maybe cheek or bottom of the ear 
And so now that pad my fingers in the soft spot, I'm just going to stretch it out until I find that anterior border of this bone here and just plant my finger there gently. You don't have to, to be extremely aggressive. You just have to get it over here and plant your finger nice and securely. Okay, and so now my sight is opened up. Okay, so you've got to have your left arm with the elbow kind of up. It helps the gravity. It helps you keep your retraction. I'm going to go in and I am going to penetrate in the middle of the soft spot. Aspirate, give a couple of comfort drops. Wait five seconds. And then I'm going to go into depth. And I'm using that fulcrum finger. Now this is a good example. I'm running into resistance. If you contact, you are not distal enough. Usually that's the problem. So I'm going to go a little bit more distal because I contacted a little early. I'm going to penetrate and I've already given comfort drops. So now I'm going to go in. She is not a huge skull size. So I'm going to stop a little bit earlier than I went on some people. I've got my angles, aspirate, give comfort drops, and then deposit. 